This homework task is based around producing a large concept map on the digestive system. Make sure that A, you go and produce some sort of diagram so you can see, see where things are and then go through and work through it systematically talking about what happens in the mouth, then the salivary gland, then the esophagus, stomach, pancreas, gallbladder, small intestines, large intestines and then the rectum. The following short video will go and help give you information about this. When considering the digestion of food, first thing that's worth noting is that the entire process is designed to break large molecules down into smaller ones so they can be absorbed into the bloodstream and therefore be used in the body. So digestion starts at the mouth. Right? In the mouth, we get a mechanical breakdown of food. The mouth is going, it's breaking down food, it's chewing it up, it increases the surface area. At the same time, you have saliva being added from the salivary gland. Saliva, A, lubricates the food, so it passes through the rest of the system more easily, and it contains the enzyme amylase, which breaks down starch into glucose. After the mouth, the food gets pushed down towards the stomach via the esophagus. Right? This process of pushing the food down is called peristalsis and it's almost like a wave of muscular contraction that pushes it downwards. After the food exits the esophagus, it reaches the stomach. In the stomach, gastric juices, so stomach acid, gets added to it to start to chemically break down the food and at the same time enzymes are added to it so proteases are added to it which break down proteins into amino acids. The stomach also churns the food up so it continues to mechanically break it down. After the stomach the food enters the top of the small intestines called the duodenum. Right? In the duodenum, bile from the gallbladder is added. The bile raises the pH of the food after it leaves the stomach. It also emulsifies fat. So it breaks up large fat molecules into smaller fat molecules, thereby increasing its surface area. The pancreas adds in pancreatic juices. These contain three enzymes. It contains the carbohydrates, which continues to break up carbohydrates into sugars. Uh, proteases, which continue to break proteins down into amino acids. And lipases, which break fats down into fatty acids and glycerol. The food then enters the small intestines. Right, the small intestines is where all of the nutrients, all of the things are being absorbed into the bloodstream. Right, the small intestines are adapted to do this in a few ways. They're very folded, thereby increasing the surface area. The inner surface are covered in villi, which also increase the surface area. Each villi is covered in microvilli, and each villi have a good blood supply which all helps maintain the concentration gradient. So the concentration of nutrients in the blood is always going to be lower than the concentration of nutrients in the food that's passing through the small intestines. After the small intestines, the food enters the large intestines. In the large intestines, excess water is being reabsorbed. After the large intestines, the food or the faeces that is left over goes and collects in the rectum before being expelled through the anus.